So we wanted to build a really modern cabin. And so I started looking at all these prefab houses that are out there. And I was really excited about doing one until we really looked at the road you just drove in on. You can't really bring a prefab house in here, but you can bring a shipping container because it's eight feet wide. And so that was sort of the beginning of thinking about shipping containers. And we thought, oh, this would be a great way to save money, have a metal box in the woods, which doesn't rot or burn. I don't think it was about building an extreme home for us, but this is earthquake country. And these things are built to be stacked up seven or eight high on a ship crossing the ocean. Well, that's like a, what, a 4.5 earthquake all the time? <laughs> Probably more than that. So these boxes can definitely handle a little shaking. And it was exciting to see a house assembled in one day. I mean, typically a wood frame house, it's, you know, months. So to see something <clears throat> come together pretty quick. Yeah, it's a little eight. over eight hours or so. So every shipping container on the end has doors. And this door is now permanently open with glass in it. And this one is now permanently welded shut. You see the shipping container door? So I call it my redneck bay window. <laughs> Instead of trying to make it not a shipping container, you know, let's work with it and celebrate its industrial aesthetic, which I really like. The structure in general, its footprint is minimal. You know, you have trees very close by. The, the shape of the house is definitely set by what you're... Yeah, it's building blocks. So this concrete structure right here is um, what we call the shower tower. It's outdoor shower. And it also holds up the upstairs bathroom. Outdoor shower. If you play in the creek and you're going to get really dirty, so <laughs> clean off. You know, it's not the cheapest way to build. Shipping containers made it affordable to do something cool design-wise. For a custom home like this, normally in this area, it would have cost a lot more. So I think one of the key design things about this house is the what the architect Dave calls the spine. It's this four foot wide section that's got metal grating outside and inside. It's between two shipping containers so that you get a wider space. Shipping containers are only eight feet wide, so you put two side by side, you're going to have a 16 foot room. So you put an extra four feet and then you, you get the extra space. But really letting the light stream in, the idea was to let the light filter down to the first floor so that just like in the forest you have filtered light, downstairs you have filtered light. Yeah, I told Dave I wanted a glass box in the woods, and he didn't think that was a good idea. <laughs> because humans need a sense of shelter, and he really felt like if you're in the woods, go outside if you want to be outside. But if you're in the house, let's have framed views and sort of a different perspective on the world and have that sense of enclosure and comfort. And he was really right. I really hadn't thought about that. And so what he's created here is it's, like, it's literally a 270 degree slice of the earth that you can see, which I've never been in a building, I don't think, that you have that, where you can see outside all the way around. It, legally, it's a one bedroom house. So yeah, and it, it really doesn't feel, because we kept the spaces open, it doesn't really give you a sense of enclosure at all. That was kind of my biggest worry about shipping container house and knowing that some rooms are only going to be eight feet wide. And so the kitchen actually is where I think is probably the genius of design because it's eight feet wide. It's an eight foot kitchen. And you come in here and it doesn't feel like it's an eight foot kitchen. You have no sense of feeling enclosed because you've got glass on both sides. And he so cleverly made a foot wide cabinet on either side so that you don't really ever have that really closed in feeling. So we can have three friends chopping vegetables at the same time, not getting each other's way. And so we have a little half bath here, and this wall is made out of some kind of plastic panels. That's really actually shower door hardware. But it was a little bit of a challenge for the shower door guy that we got, but we figured it out. But it was a clever solution when you're really trying to conserve every inch of space to not have a full thick wall there. This would have been an enclosure for a shower. And really, this idea of not wasting a single inch is throughout the whole house. If you're only eight feet wide, you don't want to give up four inches on each side for the studs and insulation and everything. So we use this special closed cell foam, I think it's called, that's much thinner so that our walls could be as, the rooms could be as big as possible.
Uh, downstairs, you could feel like you're not in a shipping container, but up here, it feels more industrial, a little more like a shipping container, all this steel I-beams and stuff. So it's really one big room upstairs. If you want a little privacy, we do have doors that you can close. And hide away in here, just barely enough space, as you can see, to clear, but it does clear. And uh, that's the bedroom. The age of the container is about, I think, about 20 years. Working life. Working life. They eventually end up getting uh, damaged, dented, and these were in very good condition. I, th I think they're the, from the 70s, the late 70s. But we had a lot of fun. So they had them in Oakland, at Port of Oakland. There was our containers all lined up. We went to say, do you want these containers? Of course, I never bought a shipping container. So show up, the architect, Dave and Cam and I, are walking around with the plans in our mind saying, OK, well, if we use this container for this half of the bedroom, we could cut out that big dent, because that's where the door is going to be. And we figured it all out so that we knew exactly which container was going to be where to optimize, you know, get rid of the dents. And the upstairs here is two 20-foot sections. And the living room is two 20-foot sections just facing the other direction this way. So the half with the doors ended up downstairs and the half without the doors right here. But they have their dents. These containers have been around the world. Who knows where they've been? And like here, there's some places where it's, you know, it's been around, but you know, it's, sho it's showing its, its experiences. I'm surprised they use such a nice wood on the floor of a shipping container. Yeah. Well, they didn't look this nice before we finished them. Yeah. And there's, see there's steel plates embedded. We actually asked the contractor to sand off all the paint and they spent about eight hours with a power sander and they, that's the best they could do. So we decided we kind of liked it this way, <laughs> that maybe it would be okay to just leave the natural shipping container look. That's the kids' room. So the sleeping nook for the kids. So we bring our son up here and his friends for sleepovers. They They're in heaven. The yeah, they love it. Uh, oh, yeah. They can hide away behind the curtain. Yeah. yeah, we had nine kids or eight kids here for a sleepover for my son's birthday. So it can fit a lot of kids in here. So okay. we're crossing to another shipping container. This is one container, the other, and then they welded a piece of steel in between. This is the one that sits on top of the shower tower outside, 20 foot section that's kind of all business, just eight foot wide bathroom. It's a little more claustrophobic in this section, but you can always sit down on the toilet and look out. Uh, <laughs> and as you can see the floor, we decided to celebrate the shipping container steel ultimately, and I actually really love the aesthetic of it against all the modern feel. So we just went with it. Washer dryer, messy closet. The only thing like a closet we have, it's all the closet we need. We had to get clever about where to put stuff, so we have, we, I got these bunk beds from a neighbor who was getting rid of them. They had drawers in the bottom. This bed also has drawers. Rarely use them. And this dresser here okay. is where you might potentially have a closet, but we don't. So there used to be a tree right outside the window here. Well, one night we're sound asleep about three in the morning. We hear this creak, 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 boom, woke us up. Cam and I are like, what was that? Yeah, he was I sure. I thought uh, it was a tree that hit the house. And it turns out it had fallen towards the creek and that had actually jumped the little road below. It's pretty eye opening how often trees fall in the forest. They really do fall, and, I, and there really is a sound. You know, at some point, this redwood may may begin to push the home, I guess. <laughs> well, that's why we built wood steps, so they can be moved when the tree gets bigger. Every time we come up here, we're like, what fell down this time? At the same time, it. unless it's one of these huge trees, it probably wouldn't do too much damage yeah. if it hit the cabin. Yeah, we joke if it does, it'll get a little dent and we'll call the auto body shop to fix the house. <laughs>